Hello everyone, it is Thursday. I have no idea what the actual date is. I'm so excited today. I'm going live with one of my favorite travelers, one of my very best friends, Rachel Rudwall. She is an incredible photographer. She's a storyteller. She is a Emmy nominated producer, a TV host, and I am so excited her live with you guys. I'm excited to see her face. I haven't seen her in a little bit. She used to live in Los Angeles and she moved. It is connecting. There we go. Let's adjust our cameras. Hi. Hi, Rach. Your hair is so long. When you're in lockdown, you can't oh ever get it cut. Gosh. I don't think I've ever seen you in glasses either. Oh, well, they help mine eyes. <laughs> um, so good to see you. It's you been too long. Good. You look great. Uh, one thing I know that is very interesting, your story uh, in terms of the coronavirus is you actually had it. Um, so you haven't really, I, I haven't noticed on your Instagram, have you shared about that with anyone yet or? No, so what has been really interesting is kind of going over and over the ways that I want to share with people. So I see some of both of our mutual friends and our, our own followers joining um, yeah. for being here. So I am starting to feel human again after having coronavirus. I have written a number of notes and kind of broken it down in ways that I think would be effective um, to share with people, yeah. there's a really interesting internal battle that I'm experiencing, which is how can I be effective without overblown? How can I share information without making people feel scared? Yeah. So, um, you know, anybody that wants to chime in with comments today as yeah. to that I can be most effective in sharing my COVID-19 experience, I'm happy to, to hear them. Um, but I'm starting to feel human. I'm exactly a month out from when the symptoms first started. And okay. so well, that's one thing I, I want to say too right away that I love and respect most about you as a human and a storyteller and, you know, the word influencer, however people want to call us. Um, you put so much thought behind what you do, whereas I think a lot of influencers don't and a lot of people who have a following or are storytellers don't put as much thought as you put into every single one of your posts everything you do i really admire and respect that about you um so how long did you have the sickness i know we had talked over text with our group of friends and you know wish we could have been there for you and i know todd was your husband how long did it affect you and you don't have to go into too much detail but just kind of a cliff note of how severe it was for you and kind of what advice in general you have for this whole kind of pandemic we're going through. Uh, the first advice I'll give is if you have the opportunity to stay home. There are a lot of people in states now that are in full lockdown um, and a lot of places that don't have the same stringent measures in place. And um, I know that there are lots and lots of people who do not have the luxury of staying home, people who are medical workers, people who are keeping grocery stores open yeah. for food delivery, and we're really grateful to you if you're one of those people. If you have a chance to stay home, stay put. Yeah. I, I can say from firsthand experience, this is a brutal illness, and I only had a case that would be considered moderate. My experience was that I got back to Oregon, where I live, yeah. from traveling to New York and then South Carolina. And I thought, you know, everything's going crazy right now. Countries are starting to shut their borders. I'm going to self-quarantine for 14 days so that if I happen to get any germs, like, I'm not going to pass them on. Yeah. I, being young and naive. <laughs> well, even, well, even yeah. just the fact that I'm so glad you're sharing this and I can't <laughs> see how you're going to share it because everyone's like, oh, if you're young and you get it, it's not a big deal. That but was, it so, is a big that was my thinking. Yeah. I was thinking, if I get it, I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm not immunocompromised, I'm very active, I do not have lung conditions. If I get it, I probably will not be that adversely affected. What really concerned me, however, was being a vector for other people to get sick. Yep. Reading how quickly this transfer from one person to four people, from those four to four more each. Yeah. Exponential growth is something our brains have a tough time um, understanding and visualizing as yeah. mere mortals. Um, 
yeah. as human beings that we are. As human as animals. animals. <laughs> yeah, as human animals. And what I felt hyper aware of was that I had a responsibility to not get other people sick in the case that I had gotten it myself. By the time I had spent just two days at home in Oregon, I started to see symptoms. They came on slow at fast. I had a headache, some body aches. I thought it was just travel fatigue. Yeah. Within four or five days of that, it became clear that things were a lot more serious and I went into a pretty solid decline. I had the full list of symptoms that you would see in news articles, the, the fever, the cough, the body aches, the, the exhaustion, all of that, plus yeah. a bunch more um, that I'm going to be sharing with people in case they're curious, not to be, a, a, you know, into fear mongering, but rather be like, here, here are a bunch of things that I experienced that maybe we aren't talking about. I had yeah. a fever of four degrees above my normal temperature. So for me, that was 102. Okay. Seven days. I had you the fever for seven days. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and when you have that much of a fever, your body is fighting incredibly hard. So everything else is really difficult. I couldn't sit up. I couldn't talk. I, there was a lot that I couldn't do for at least a week. Um, wow. Now that I'm a month out, it's still remarkable to me how much repair my body still seems to be doing even and though I, I just want to point out too you are an athletic person you are in shape yeah. you go hiking all the time you are one of the most fit travelers i know so the fact that you're saying this is i think i'm athletic i'm in shape it's not going to affect me no when, when i hear you say that you mm -hmm. are a wake-up call yeah yeah it's um a lot of people have said it doesn't discriminate the, the coronavirus, right? It, it can. Oh, Rachel. Uh oh. Uh oh. Where'd you go? Hold on. The, sorry. You know what just happened? We lost a little. <laughs> no, we're good. I got the we're notification. <laughs> yeah, you were saying it doesn't. Well, discriminate. here's what happened. I... <laughs> well, I got the notification from Instagram that said you've spent too much time on Instagram today. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it really? You really get a notification? Yeah, that? it was like, oops, your time. By the way, I'm sweating in here because I have the heat on because it's raining and cold in LA, so I'm taking my little sweater off. Maybe you have an empathy fever. <laughs> no, I have yeah, medical an thing? empathy fever. Yeah. I've been t I took my temperature and I had a 98.2 today. So yeah, okay, so you're good. So yeah. anyway, um, yeah, I, I, um. People are saying that. Where did I go? No, wait a minute. It turned around. Come wait, back. Why are we? Come <laughs> back. Oh, was it, was it I'm there. Keep that? going. I'm going to fix this. <laughs> I'm here. What's the first thing I said? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. I'm there. Hey, I'm going to scroll through these great comments while we're at it. We've got I know. Sorry. Hey, where, why our... can't I see myself now? We have people laughing, crying, laughing emojis at the lack of capabilities. We have some greetings. Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. Thanks for Hello, joining. Hello, Megan. Hello, Hasee. <laughs> hey, oh my Kelsey. Goodness. It's great to I'm see you. I'm sorry. I cut you off from my taking my clothes off and then turning the camera around. Um, this IG on. Live is getting wild. Um, yeah, live feed, everyone. OK, so <laughs> I guess what would be your, your, then your, your biggest takeaway is stay home, right? Yeah, my biggest takeaway is stay home because um, our ego brains as young people tell us that we are, I mean, I'm in my 30s now, so I am starting to acknowledge my own mortality and I, I'm not like 18 anymore going, I'm invincible. Yeah. However, our ego brains tell us that if we're young or if we consider ourselves healthy or if we don't consider ourselves immunocompromised, that we're going to be immune from this thing. But because yeah. it is unfamiliar to the human race yeah. it's something that we have no control over yeah. and you should be staying home because a you could get sick and it could be really bad my experience felt like a really bad experience and i would only be considered moderate not sick. yeah um the, the differentiation being that i didn't need to go onto a ventilator or get breathing support at a hospital that's what makes it severe and i'm really thankful that i was just moderate but it was still brutal yeah. so you could get sick that's scary enough. But what I would encourage you to consider is the effect that you're having on other people. There are people that you know that you obviously don't want to get sick, parents, grandparents, yeah. partners, but there are people that you don't know that you don't yeah. want to get sick as well. Because every instance of COVID-19 in your own community 
creates more opportunities for it to spread at an unnatural yeah. rate. And no one wants that. No one wants to be the vector for someone else's life being at risk. And yeah. um, we can look at this as an opportunity instead to, even though it's uncomfortable, yeah. sit in our sense of quiet and examine the beautiful thing. It's you know, it's, I, the, fact that, the fact that you beautiful. said that is amazing because my next question, what I was thinking for you is, Rachel always has a way of looking at the positives of a hard situation or of any situation. And I, was, I went for a run yesterday in the street. And as I was running by different people and strangers, I thought to myself, I feel connected to these strangers in a way that I have never felt connected to strangers in my life before, because universally, we are all going through the same thing in a different way. But we are connected by this weird, you know, experience, this hard, difficult experience. And I was going to ask you, where do you find the positives in this? And you already started speaking about it. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the invitation that I think we should extend to ourselves and to one another to seek out the positives. That doesn't mean that we have to. Use oh my gosh, you know what it is? Every time I go to like wave at someone, it's going back and forth on me. And one of I'm the done positives. Waving. Hi, everyone. I waved to you. <laughs> one of the positives is learning just how tech savvy you are. Um. Yeah. Grandpa <laughs> over here. I had my grandpa <laughs> sweater on. Your little walker. <laughs> <laughs> well, tennis balls on the bottom. Oh, man. So I think that we have the opportunity to give ourselves permission to be kind to ourselves and be patient and acknowledge that we're going to experience a lot of emotions right now. And some of them will be uh, grief. Some will be shock. Some will be um, confusion. There will be any number of things that we feel we have to contend with that are difficult emotions, but we also have an opportunity to look at all of the beautiful tiny things that we never take the time to notice. Yeah. That we never have the bandwidth to respect, to give love to. I have had more FaceTime dates and Zoom dates with people that I adore that I haven't seen in ages. Yeah. In a decade. I mean, I there are people who were my best friends growing up that I haven't mm -hmm. spoken to in seven years. And we're going to be able to have a catch up conversation because we're immobilized. Yeah. And so suddenly available. And um, I appreciate very much what you said, too, about seeing the connections between people. My first thought, which I think is very um, rose colored glasses <laughs> in a metaphor. <laughs> I really hoped that as traumatizing as this pandemic is for people around the world, for all of us, I also hope it grants an opportunity to see how interconnected we are. Yes. We are always connected. We yeah. Everything that we do affects other people and those people affect other people. We're yeah. in a beautiful complex web of being that we do not really examine. Yeah show love to yeah. appreciate and now we're being forced to look at it in ways that maybe we don't normally and i hope that from here forward people see this as an invitation to step into community and into kindness and i love that perspective what we are and it's and i think that's one of the reasons we love travel so much is because through travel we see the interconnectedness of the world of humanity and as much as different as we think we might be and as far away, we're all connected in so many ways. And this virus shows that it started in one place and it's gone around the world. And that's how connected we are. And we can choose to use that connection in a positive way um, and seeing it through this light, hopefully will shine. Uh, that is an example, which I, I love. And so I, I just want to thank you for sharing a little bit about your experience. And I, I, I do look forward to seeing how you're going to share on your platforms and to your audiences because you always put so much depth and perspective into everything you do. And I, and I admire that about you. Um, so now let's get a little bit away from COVID-19. Um, tell everyone how many countries you've been to and how many continents you've been to. Uh, seven continents yes. out of seven. Seven out of seven. Seven out of seven, which is yeah. pretty amazing. Um, I'm, uh, quick uh, note, I'm from a small town in Ohio. And as soon as I found out how 
big the world was. I was like, can I go to that? So when was that? When was that? <laughs> That's a thing. Uh, I started traveling when I was, I mean, I had the benefit of taking my first overseas trip when I was about 12. My okay. grandma asked me to visit cousins who lived in the UK. So we went it. and stayed with them, ate fancy high tea. Nana tells me that at high tea, a formal affair, all I did was eat sugar cubes. Ah! <laughs> fancy. <laughs> so long. <laughs> um, so I've been fancy since the beginning. Um, but I love it. so the seventh continent I had the opportunity to visit was Antarctica. And that was. Well, I was going to ask you, go, I want you to go through each continent and say your favorite spot on each mm. continent. Well, let's start with Antarctica. I think that was pretty simple, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I only have the opportunity to say one spot, and that is the Antarctica. <laughs> how did you experience, how did you do Antarctica? I went to Antarctica on assignment with a magazine called Afar, yes. and it's in conjunction with a company called Silver Sea Cruises that does luxury cruises, and they have expedition ships as well. So I went on a luxury expedition sailing to Antarctica, which is pretty- I'm so jealous of that trip. <laughs> pretty amazing. Um, and something that I certainly, at least in that context, would not have been able to afford myself. So going on a site was yeah. great because I was writing an article on sustainable travel, I was shooting photography and creating social media content for Afar and for the brand. Yeah. Uh, that continent is extraordinary because we think it will be just cold, desolate and shades of white and gray. Yeah. But it is the most full of life I mean, it, it, it's just everywhere you look from the seabirds to the whales to the colonies of penguins, it's loud, it's um, brilliantly exciting. On a clear day, the deep blue of the sky. Uh, I know, I watched you on that trip and I was just like, this is such a different world that so many people don't get to experience or ever will. And that's what is the beauty of social media and that's the beauty of the work that we get to do is we get to share places like that with people who will never get to experience it. My hope is that I take the responsibility that I have and I honor it by always making sure that people feel invited on the adventure because being from where I'm from, acknowledging that travel is not always available to people financially, it's difficult. Where time is concerned, it's difficult. Family responsibilities, it's difficult. Yeah. And so I acknowledge that if I have the opportunity to see, experience, get to know some place that is not my own home, yeah. that it's beautiful to be able to invite other people to join me there. Yeah, no, and you do an amazing job with that. Okay, let's go to, let's go to another continent. Let's go to South America. What's your favorite spot? Favorite spot would be the Patagonia. So mm. Southern Chile, yes. Southern Argentina. Yeah. Um, would you say West. Torres del Paine is, would you say Torres del Paine? Yeah. Um, for me, I would say yes, because I spent time doing the double U trek, which you did as well. Yeah. So yeah. Um, my husband and I went on a vacation and we yep. did yeah. the, this brilliant trek in this national park. And it's just so staggeringly beautiful. Um, you'll I just want to also the, point out, where did you and your husband go on your honeymoon to? Oh, we went to Tanzania and we climbed, I'm going to put that in air quotes, climbed Kilimanjaro. Um, yeah. it's really just a long walk up a very big hill, <laughs> but yeah, we, we went to Kilimanjaro, we summited, um, on an, a seven day track or an eight day track. And then we went on safari, um, to unwind, which is really, and that's just, that's just the type of people you are. That's what I love about you guys so much. It's like that's what you chose to do on your honeymoon, you know? Um, but I, sorry, about back to Patagonia, mm -hmm. we both did the W. Yep. Yep, we, um, so I love the Patagonia for South America. That, that um, brings me to then, your, your segue brings me to yeah. favorite spots in, in Africa. Yes, Which where? East Africa and also Morocco. Um, East Africa, I've been to five or six countries in that corner of the globe. I know Africa is huge. Yeah. Um, but the places that I've had the opportunity to visit there that really highlight and protect wildlife are my personal favorites. So Serengeti National Park, oh, yeah. um, 
Ngoro Ngoro crater is this really beautiful bowl of earth in which tons of different species coexist, um, rhinos and zebras and giraffes. So it's, it's definitely bucket list worthy. Yeah. Uh, Morocco, I would love to go back. I went on a job assignment with Afar. I was leading a photography tour for Afar magazine and Nikon cameras. And we drove through the Atlas Mountains and I would love to go back on a trek there. And that says a lot because there's usually you, Excuse you want, oh, oh, hey. You, you this is a real phone. <laughs> oh, wait, you have a landline? A mobile. How do you have, I, the you're relative. the only person I know our age that has a landline. It's the relative. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going to let it keep ringing. Sorry. Uh, well, so that says a lot about Morocco because we're the type of people that when we go to locations and destinations, we don't necessarily want to go back, we want to keep going to see new places. So if something stands out to go back to, that means it's a, a, an amazing, incredible place. I find that the, the closer I become to the old fart age of like mid thirties, there are places that I'm really excited to return to again and yes. again. And I'm yes. no longer compelled to the same degree by must see new. Yeah. That, that part of like, ego I love that need is kind of dying out and I'm going, it's okay to just return because the place feels rich and warm and inviting to me. And yeah. I can keep going back. Yeah. Lala Scoop says I hiked Atlas mountains in 94 to Berber village as Melissa Curtin. Nomadic no. SP says, have you been to India? Have you been to India? I have, yeah. I spent a month traveling India, again, with my husband. This was back in 2011. And um, we had a friend who was living there. And so we went and started by visiting her and her husband in Chennai. Then we cut west on a train and we went um, up kind of the west coast and we my favorite spot in india was one that was teeny tiny okay it was called udi oh, oh where, where in the country um it's in the south but it's okay. kind of centrally located so it would be between chennai on the east coast and do you see is there a cat do you see a cat no bring the cat in <laughs> hold on rosie isn't very user friendly <laughs> oh and i love this okay if you're gonna reveal a cat i'm gonna reveal something i am not wearing pants <laughs> That's right. I'm sitting here in underwear. <laughs> really? Okay. So we can do okay. now, right? <laughs> so, um, okay. Udi, um, I loved because it's small. Um, it's the, it's a location where there are a lot of different tea plantations and eucalyptus growing operations. And um, so things smell like eucalyptus. Things oh, smell no. like um, the, because it's smaller and further removed, people have more bandwidth to just be really welcoming and be like, come check out these carrots that we're washing that we've just wow. earth and like have some tea. And um, that felt really special. Uh, JJ, oh, heard... JJ's Kelly says, prove it. Okay, JJ, there oh. we go. <laughs> also, JJ, I have been to India as well. I went to India. I was working on a Travel Channel show. JJ is the host of it with Kinga Phillips called Lost in the Wild. They're actually re-airing it because they need programming right now and it's an amazing show. The show, we went to India. We had some issues where I was only in India for three days. So within one week, I flew to India and then back to LA. Within one week, flew around the world, which was crazy. We were in the Northern Himalayas in India and uh, we were telling the story of a Instagrammer blogger who went missing. Uh, check out Lost in the Wild if you haven't seen it. It's a little plug for JJ Kinga and the Travel Channel. Um, but yeah, so India, that sounds like I've never heard of that spot that you went to and I'm gonna definitely look it up. Gotta it's go back to okay. India. What I about do, North America? What about North America? I can give an unbiased account of that oh, yeah. episode of the show. Oh, oh, Justin, the Justin Shuffler. Intensely mysterious, mm -hmm. left me with perhaps more questions than answers. Okay. And the visuals were beautiful. Yeah. So, JJ, Kinga, Justin, and your reenactment scenes. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. story hit home with me. So, for anyone who hasn't seen it, Lost in the Wild is a show that followed the stories of unsolved mysteries of people that have gone missing in remote parts of the world. That story was about... A, a man named Justin in his mid thirties, who was a blogger, Instagrammer, and he went missing in India. And oh, she's going back. He went missing in India. And that story for me hit home because I related to him on so many levels. 
and we met his mother before going to India. She was the sweetest woman. And it's really hard when people lose loved ones and they don't have 100% the truth or answers mm -hmm. to what happened to their loved ones. Mm -hmm. So I definitely recommend checking out Lost in the Wild. We're re-airing it on the Travel Channel. And uh, I was really on proud. Easter. What? Easter, Easter, there's a um, marathon Easter morning this Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah. We'll check in in the comments, but yeah. um, I yeah, think JJ, plug where people can watch it, when people can watch it. Yeah, okay, Rachel, yeah. going around the world with you still, uh, North America, favorite spot? Uh, I have a few, but I would say Utah is one of my favorite spots on earth. And we've and been to Utah together. We have. Yes, we went to Zion together. So what part of Utah? Uh, probably my favorite would be Grand Staircase, Escalante. It's an area that is a national monument. I cannot recall, but maybe the national monument status was revoked recently with the current administration, but, or it was, um, the land mass was reduced, but it's this really incredibly beautiful protected area of slot canyons and beautiful arches, uh, spanning rivers. And so I did a backpacking trip there with Todd, my husband, with Tony, a, a buddy from climbing and also who's a director of photography for National Geographic. Um, I love British Columbia. Okay. Uh, so the you know, I've never Canada. been to Canada. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I know. Whenever I think, when, I, when you were there, I remember thinking to myself, I love the outdoors and wilderness. Why have I not been to Canada? It's exquisitely beautiful in BC. It's rugged. There are all of these incredible passageways and essentially fjords into forests where you can go grizzly watching along the coast. Um, yeah. I also love Mexico City. So this is pretty different than a lot of the answers I've given, which are based in the outdoors. Mexico City is my favorite city on earth. So that's a favorite spot in North America, hands down. Colorful, vibrant, adventure around every corner. People are welcoming. Things are delicious. And you did Dia de los Muertos there and like I the did. whole face paint. And that was gorgeous. It was it amazing. Was, it's so cool. In Latin America, the mix of Mesoamerican culture and Catholicism merge for this beautiful ceremony and, and series of celebrations called Dia de los Muertos, which is Day of the Dead. Yeah. And it's a week long, every day honoring those who have passed from your family members to your friends, to your community. The movie Coco yeah. is based on that and yeah. fairly accurate, a colorful, lovely portrayal. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's such a cool understanding of honoring the people that we've loved who've come and gone. It's, it's a of celebration versus like a funeral, you know, which yes. is beautiful. Um, I would like to say that JJ did confirm that Lost in the Wild Marathon is this Sunday starting at 7 a.m. on the Travel Channel. For I love it. Hello, Bill. Hello, Monica. Hello, Ozzy. Yeah. Seeing some great people I know joining yeah. the chat. Do you have any questions for Rachel? She's one of my best friends. I miss her so much. She used to live like 10 minutes from me. She moved to Oregon. I miss you so much. What continent have we missed? What continent have we missed? We haven't hit Europe. Europe. And, and, and we had a comment from somebody who said, if you both love hiking, have you been to Switzerland? Yes. Yes. Love. Yes. It's otherworldly in its beauty. I so where would you I say took in my Europe? grandma there last summer because she wanted to. I, I took Nana. Know. I just oh, to Switzerland oh my God, that here. trip. I am so jealous. So Rachel took her Nana earlier. Everybody. She talked about how when she was with her Nana, she, that inspired her to travel. And the tea you guys did, you taking your Nana on that trip, that was the cutest trip ever. And I <laughs> wish that I had my grandparents alive to this day, that I could have taken them on a trip like that. That trip was so special mm -hmm. and tell you know what was your favorite memory or kind of moment of that trip traveling to Europe with your grandma well what was remarkable is she is now 92 she was 91 at the time we were traveling during a heat wave and we were traveling for two weeks together in confined spaces on a riverboat cruise sharing a room what really struck me was how well we got along oh. um, being in that tight of a space with somebody else of a dramatically different era who is she's used to living alone for me my favorite part was how much we laughed and how well we got along and 
she's so independent and stubbornly so that it was really humbling to reach a point where she would accept help and I could bring her cookies in the afternoon and like hot cocoa or I could take her arm when we were on cobblestones and she would accept it. Um, when we had to part ways at the airport in Paris, we were just both ugly crying. Oh my gosh. We'd call each other for weeks and be like, I miss my roommate. Oh my gosh, that is adorable. Um, that is, you're so lucky to have had that opportunity. Um, yeah. I would I would have loved to have gone to Italy with my grandparents or even, I, I, I really am proud of my Italian heritage and I'm also German. And going to Germany has made me love my German heritage more because I absolutely love Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and to have had that opportunity to travel with a grandparent is so special. You're yes. so lucky you got to do that. Um, Ada, I mean, Europe, would you say your favorite spot in Europe? My favorite spots would probably be Scotland and um, Scandinavia. I um have spent a lot of time working in cold climates like in alaska and i mentioned the antarctica earlier um but what is really surprising to me as someone who runs cold and doesn't think she likes being cold like that <laughs> suits to bed basically between september and april i'm like bye husband i'll see you in the spring <laughs> i love the arctic and the antarctic when it's cold when it's that bleak sort of your eyes might freeze shut cold it is so beautiful and stark the opportunity to go out and play still exists and there are even places in the u.s that are like this my understanding of minneapolis st paul area is oh it's, i love that area terribly cold people get out and they, they nordic ski that's mm -hmm. something that i really appreciate about scandinavia um scotland holds a special place in my heart because there's a strange nostalgia about it even if you've never been and you go for the first time you'll be like have i lived here before <laughs> <laughs> but you watch outlanders and there were outlander shoots i don't watch no outlander. but i should yeah, I, I hear a lot of people love that show does anybody and, watch um, outlander and I met my husband there too. Aww. At the time we were just friends. And then a couple years later, he was living in a cabin in the woods in Alaska. And I went up there and I was like, hi, I'm a, I'm a female. You're a male. What are your thoughts? <laughs> and we've been together since. Um, oh my gosh. All right. But you didn't do Australia. Australia. So I would consider that a part of the greater continent of Oceania. <laughs> yes. No, I agree with Oceania. It is part of Oceania. So, so are you going to go outside of Australia and say New Zealand, I'm guessing? I think I'm going to say New Zealand. Okay. Yeah, it's a really um, expectable answer. I don't know if that's a word, expectable. So but did you do the North and the South Island or did you do... Yes. And this is the trip you did with Erin, correct? Yes. So I spent three weeks last spring traveling and doing work across North and South Island of New Zealand with someone named Erin Sullivan at Erin Outdoors, E-R-I-N. Her content's incredible, especially right her. now, yeah. right now during lockdown, instead of doing her traditional outdoor oh, it's amazing. wildlife photography, she's doing miniature scenes of the outdoors, but um, with train figurines and with things from her house, like broccoli forests and sugar sand dunes. You have to look it up. It Is it Aaron Outdoor or Outdoors? I'm going to write it in. Outdoors. Aaron Outdoors. Um, Bro, I just put it she's in actually there. Done a it is of, so creative. She's and done it's mind-blowing how she's doing it. I, <laughs> yes. I, I saw that and I couldn't <laughs> believe it. And she's encouraging other people to join. So you can look up the hashtag, Our Great Indoors. Um, and you can create your own landscape and miniature scene and have a sense of play in a time where we're all restricted in our movement. She did a couple of different um, outdoor scenes that were based on our trip, actually. I think the most recent one was based on a glowworm cave that we went uh, down to and we were photographing glowworms. Um, so that's good. how the trip came to be. Erin heard me talk at an event. We had had coffee maybe w once or twice before. She said, oh, I heard you talk and you said you've always dreamed of going to New Zealand. Um, I'm thinking of going in a couple months and photographing glowworms. Just a chill, like, do you want to come to New Zealand with do you want me? To, do you want to go <laughs> photograph glowworms? Or, and I was like, yeah, of course. So, uh, <laughs> so we did. And, uh, uh, and I loved it. Oh, so good. I think one thing that, uh, you know, we've been to Zion together. We met. Tell people how we met, actually, the story of how our love affair began. How well, did we meet? We met on a service-based um, cruise foray 
into the Caribbean with a company which was called Fathom that took us to Dominican Republic. And its goal was to not just bring people to a destination that you'd hop off the boat and see and, and maybe buy some souvenirs from a tourist driven shop from, but you would actually go and contribute to the community through um, language exchange, through helping to make cement floors and homes that had dirt floors, but they wanted to have something um, more stable, yeah. things like that. And we met and I was like, Justin, our energy is very much alike. Yeah, I was like, you might be the female version of me a little bit, and I'm the male version of you. We, they, people call us twins on the ship. <laughs> yeah, probably because we look alike. Oh yeah, we look so much alike, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, that was the beginning and it's I think one thing that I'm so grateful for being in this kind of travel world is meeting people like you that we meet on these trips and then we connect and we have lifelong friendships that if anyone's listening they can tell it's not just about going to locations and it's you know doing cool activities it's about connecting with people and on that trip specifically we had a group of friends that we would go out and do these service activities then we would come back to the cruise ship. We would sit at dinner for like three to four hours and share our experiences <laughs> and get really in depth on how our experiences were affecting ourselves and how it could affect us in the world as a global citizen. And it's just that these conversations, they, they are fueling me. And even what you were saying, like the beauty in quarantine, I'm having these little live chats that I'm loving because I'm connecting with people mm -hmm. like you and my friends from all over the world that I didn't do this before on a regular basis, twice or three times a week. So yeah. I think that um, we do have to find the beauty in the hardships. And I think you are one of the best examples of someone who does that. I'm so excited to keep seeing where you go during quarantine. And I guess what is kind of the top thing or advice during quarantine when people are stuck at home that you would say people can do to kind of bring travel into their home? So um, what's fun is I'm actually seeing comments from a number of people whose work I think can inspire you. Um, Justin dropped in the comments for any of you wondering at Erin Outdoors. You can go to Erin's content. You can see the miniature landscapes that she's putting together. You can participate by yeah. doing your own landscapes with cutting boards and broccoli and paper bags and whatever. That yeah. is a way to feel inspired and connected and creative even when we're staying put. Hey, Sierra, I see you on there. Oh, hello. Up. She has these incredible posts that I've personally been saving and also sharing to my Insta stories that are like top travel related books to read while you're in quarantine, best foreign films or international films to watch. Yeah. So there are people who are creating content. Michaela Malozzi, who's on here travel at Travel Bare Feet. Yeah. She has a brilliant show on PBS Ooh. that covers dance around the world so Amazing. she'll go to different countries she's a trained dancer and she'll connect with the cultures there whether it's central asia or it's western europe she'll yeah. go to dance and she'll yeah. immerse herself in place and it's yeah. just she's so empathetic she's so charming she's uh -huh. so beautifully grounded that if you watch her show on pbs you're going to get that sense of adventure we yeah. talked about jj and kinga's show which you produced there are lots of ways for us to continue exploring, whether you're watching shows on Netflix, you're reading new books, yeah. but whatever it is, hopefully it gives you permission to experience this strange pause in our world in the way yeah. that feels right to you. There are a lot of people who are like, this is the time to hustle harder and have the most abs. And that's good if that feels good to oh, you. No, I totally agree. But I also, if you just want to cocoon and you want to dream or you want to do some internal voyaging, this is your invitation. And I asked a friend yesterday, I said, do you think that when we're done, we get back to normal life, but we'll look back and we'll miss anything about quarantine. And I think what you just said and talked about are the moments we will miss. This is a global opportunity to hit the pause button and to do that internal voyage, the external voyage, the connection with people. And we have to remind ourselves as tough as it gets. I had a really tough week. I'm not going to lie about that. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to have their ups and downs. You have to live in those downs. You have to get through them and then bring yourself back to where is the positivity here? Where can I make the best of this opportunity and connect in different ways to myself and other people? So yeah. I am so thankful that you gave us your time today. Mm -hmm. I love seeing your face. I love you so much. You are such a beautiful person inside and out. 
You inspire me all the time. And I, I'm getting like emotional talking about it because I'm so, so thankful you are in my life. Mm -hmm. And I miss you a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really happy you're healthy. Thanks, friend. Likewise, I'm happy that you're healthy, that you're taking the opportunity to connect people through these conversations. We have the benefit of having met in person and shared adventure and yeah. shared experience. And you're doing a very beautiful thing by extending well, I am excited to, to travel with you again. For example. I didn't think I was going to cry. You're making me cry, Rachel. Yeah, but think of this because of you creating this invitation and this conversation and this space. We're hearing things like at Angela Josephine has been baking recipes from Love countries that. and sharing their recipes. That hadn't yeah. even occurred to me. This is the thing that's going to bring so much joy. And when I was sick of, of coronavirus and I had no appetite and I actually couldn't keep food down, all I wanted and dreamed about was <laughs> cake. So, <laughs> so here we are. Yeah, I love it. You learning need to together. Give a fun fetty cake, you know. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> inviting all of us into your world. Of so course, I'm so I love you so much. Thank you. Have a good rest of your your day. And uh, everyone, if you don't follow Rachel already, follow her. She's amazing, incredible. Love you so much. Love you. Bye, friend. Bye.